Greetings everybody, welcome to my next Sprout Edit tutorial. In this particular tutorial I'll be talking to you about how to uh, quicken up your building time with maps by learning easy workarounds and quick uh, hotkeys and different things you could use to really speed things up. And you don't have to do as, as many tedious uh, things so it, it, bec it won't be a pain anymore to do some tasks that you tend to avoid a lot. So the topics for this particular tutorial will be covering terrain, uh, models, GATs, and light maps, and just specifically hotkeys and quick quick uh, tip guides. All right. So let's start with the terrain. Now you can see I already have a texture here, but the first tool I like to show you about is how to populate a much larger area with a texture that you'd like to use. So instead of taking a tedious way ar around and individually pasting a texture to build your area. Why not do it all at once with a single click? And there's a function there called fill area with selected texture. Now to do that, all you have to do is select a texture like I've already done. Then you go to edit mode, global height edit, select an area that you wish to highlight. So I'm just highlighting an area. You can't really see that because it's on a no draw zone, but I did highlight an area, release, then go to edit, fill area with selected texture. Uh, you you might get this light map out of bounds. That's fine. Just go to Tools, Clear Map. You'll have that thing pop up again, and then just clear light maps, and it won't pop up anymore. So I'll just save that. So you can see I, I just populated an entire zone on my map with the same texture. That saved me a lot of time. And this is very useful when it comes to uh, a field map, and you want to populate with sand or a grassy texture or anything. Even indoors is, works just as well. So that's one of the texture uh, quick tips. Another one is the new uh, is how to flip, rotate, or just maneuver your texture around more uh, fluidly and, and easier. So you can see I have a, I have a texture here. So I, yeah, you can see I already have a texture here, and I want to show you how to flip this and rotate it. So the first thing to do is if you wanted to, I just paste it there. If you want to rotate it around, just hit the space bar. And you'll notice that I'm rotating it around like this. And you can also see that it's not aligned nicely with this the rest of them here so I'll show you another another tool to do that and that's clicking the H or the V key to horizontally flip or vertically flip it so if I hit the H key you'll notice that that lined up nicely that lined up nicely and this lines up nicely and you can do the same thing by pressing the V key so if I vertically flipped it you'll notice that doesn't work because it's not lined up but again I can just keep you know moving this around so because I hit the V, I got to hit that back with H, and that perfectly aligns. And you can create all kinds of patterns with this, which is really neat, and really align your textures up much easier. So that's a couple of things with textures. Um, another, th another thing to use with textures is to use the backspace key on it. So let's just say this, w this particular square, just with this pattern, was my walkable zones, and you want to do light maps on it. Well, you would want to get rid of the rest of, the, of these texture areas just to conserve your time when it comes to calculating light maps. So the less textures you have pasted on your map, the faster your lights will calculate. It's not because the node the uh, no draw zones, which is a uh, yellow space, by clicking the backspace with a texture, will not have lights calcul on it, calculated on it, and therefore it will avoid calculating lights on this, which, again, saves time. So use, use a backspace key to only, you know, only provide areas that need textures to have textures on it. So the next thing we're talking about is walls. So I'm going to get a texture that we could use for a wall. So let's just say I want to use this one. Now I'll just create a border around here. That's going to be my, my, my uh, wall. You'll notice that the texture is messed up because I had it originally flipped using the H or the V. So I'm just going to fix that. And I'm just going to create a really quick border around here. And then I'll raise a wall. So let's just raise the wall here. So you can just select the border like this. Hold control to continuously select what you want. And then raise it all together. Right, I'm just going to save this. So let me show you a really easy way to populate an area with a wall inst uh, without doing it individually, clicking the, the bottom pieces of here. Because if I did that, you notice that it takes a while to do that. But if I hold the button, in this case I'm holding comma, it will populate the entire uh, section of that wall until it ends. So you can see that saves a lot of time. Same thing for here. Just hold period to 
depending on the direction you're facing, right? If you're going, if you're looking east, it's just period. And over here, we're using the ground. See, I'm just holding the period or the or the column button, and I just pop up my my walls very quickly. So another thing with walls is if you wanted to, let's just say I wanted to put a column here or here or here, and I wanted to shift them around so they turn direction. So if if I hit the Alt H is it Alt H? Hold on a second. Sorry, just H. So in this particular direction of the wall, if I hit H, I'm actually shifting it from the direction of the texture from from uh, originally from right to left. So you can see how it's shifting right to left. I can even press V to vertically flip the entire wall, like this. And you notice that originally you would just have to click on the texture, hit vertically flip, and then it flips. But if you want to do the entire section, just Click V or H to uh, horizontally shift it or flip it. Same thing can be done on the other direction of the wall. So I just paste some more of these columns. And if I press H on top of here or V, it will not work. But if I hold Alt V or Alt and H, that'll that'll work. And again, it all depends on the direction your te your uh, wall is facing. So some ca in, in one case you'll have just H and V. Other case will be Alt and H, Alt and V. All right, and that's just a really easy way to flip or or horizontally shift your texture on a wall for the entire section of the wall. Next. So, so the next thing we're going to talk about is GATs. So if we go to Edit Mode, GAT Edit, you'll notice that if I just get rid of these things first of all, I don't want that in the way. Go to GAT Edit. You notice that the GATs are nicely aligned on my textures, which is what we want. However, let's just say we raise the terrain in here. So if I went here and I just, I'll make this slot to sloping so that everything just raises up. I'm just, I'm just holding the left uh, mouse button, you can see I'm raising the terrain here around here slightly. But if I go back to GAT Edit, you'll notice that the, that the GATs aren't aligned properly on the texture or the new terrain. So hit Edit, and then th this function is Set GAT Height, and you'll notice that everything is set back to the height. So use it all the time. Okay? That's one function. Next thing about GATs is uh, whenever I personally ma uh, build a map, I always set the entire map to not walkable. So I just hit plus 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 so the radius of this not blockable not walkable covers the entire map. And I just put that to hit the minus so it's back to four by four or eight by eight, whatever. And then in the end I just highlight a zone that needs to have walkable areas. So that all the non walkable areas are already taken care of. So the only thing you need to worry about is where should players walk. And of course you can get rid of all the then you can fix the errors that you might have might have occurred if you did this. And that's uh, really a couple of things to know about uh, for GAT edit. Another thing you might not know about is you could raise a GAT texture, sorry, GAT, uh, GAT placement by hitting the page up or page down. So if I went to GAT edit and I just covered an area, you can raise or lower a GAT. And to do that, all I have to do is just hit page up or page down. Now uh, you will not be able. To, so you can see I'm actually raising it using page up, page down. But if you have edit sloping, you'll notice that the gats are still connected. They don't just raise independently, but you're actually sloping them. So this is very useful if you ever want to uh, make a, a slope on a hill or, or a, a slope that's going up. So that's one way to do it: is to slope your gats. And that's just a couple of tools if you want to to learn how well that you could do with uh, GAT edit and to real set them back to the floor. Just hit set GAT height and you're done. Everything's set back to the normal uh, spot. So that's GAT uh, GAT edit. Uh, to, uh, tool quick tools. The next thing we're talk about is light maps. So if you ever wanted to use a light bulb that's already pre-configured. So let's just say if I spawned a light bulb like this and I wanted everything already filled out for me, right? So if I really wanted a one here. Uh, 0.5 here, this to have, I don't know, 127 on that, or a range of 20. 
So let's just, this will be a perfect torch light. How would I have that already pre-configured? So if you actually right click on the light bulb, you should see favorites. And then if you go to colors, you should see that there's already default ones or some kind of ambient light or whatever. Yeah, this one's already pre-configured, I don't need to use that. But if you go to favorites, colors, you'll see that there's already default ones. So you can actually assign your own favorites for light bulbs. And to do that, you need to go into your brow edit main directory. So here I am in my brow edit main directory. I'm just going to shift that there. And you should see a text document here. Or let me just find and it should be called lights. So here is one right here. It's called lights. This is your this is your uh, text document that'll enable you to define your own favorites for light bulbs. And it's very easy to use. It's actually quite easy. So here's an example. We saw originally when we right click on our light bulb, we saw default. Well, we could change that to let's say torch. So if I call that torch and I could set the the RGB combination to be 1 and 0.5 the range, let's say, was 20 because it's relatively small. Brightness is 127. Max uh, light is fine. Gives off shadow. Uh, zero, that's uh, light fall off range. That's fine. And then we save this. Let's just say we just save that right there. Now, if we, if we re restarted Brow Edit, so I'm going to close that and then restart it. And I'm just going to open up our map again. We had a little test map. As you can see, let's go back to light ma uh, light edit, spawn your bulb, right click it, favorites, and then there it is, torch. If I hit that, it's already filled out for us, and it's so easy to do. So 1.50127202256, perfect one. Do not cast shadows. It's ready to go, and you could really, really, you can define as many as you want. I'm pretty sure there's a limit. I don't know what that is, but you could define all kinds of cases, torches. Uh, lamps. It could be suns. It could be. Uh, it could be different kind of specific color combinations. Whatever you want, and it's very useful. Another thing to to know with lights is you can copy and paste them. And to do that, just go to edit mode, global height edit, highlight the region where your light bulb was, hit the C tool, just deselect everything else but lights, as you can see, and then just paste it. So if I go back to light edit you should see my light, my lights right there. And you can continuously do this as many times as you want, or you could just spawn your own torches. See that? I'm just spawning lights like crazy with my own preferred uh, uh, favorite, and then populate your, light, your map that way. So use it. It's very useful. The next thing to know about light, uh, light bulbs or light edit mode in, in terms of calculating light maps is if I wanted to Actually, I'll show you. Actually, no, 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 mind. If I wanted to calculate light maps on this particular block, you will notice that you might have shadows appearing on the top right-hand corner. That's because of the of the lights. Uh, it, it's when, when, whenever a, a light map is calculated on the side over here, it might uh, continuously fall over, and you'll be left with this random black shadow, which looks really bad. So, how do you stop that from happening? If you uh, remove the texture off the very edge of this particular wall after you calculate light maps. So, you, of course, you calculate light maps and then you remove the texture here, just backspace it so you have a no draw zone, resave your map, and it'll be gone. And it, it really does clean, clean up a lot of your maps so it doesn't look as bad and you can, you know, it just looks much better in the end. So, that's another thing to, to know about when it comes to light maps. Alright, so those are the quick tools. I think that's all I'm going to cover for today on that matter, and yeah, that's about it. So use those quick, uh, those quick hot hotkey tools. It's they're very basic, easy to use, and they will uh, save you a lot of time and effort on you know avoiding tedious work. All right, so take care and thanks a lot.